I, I'm glad we got you today because both Kaplan and Bullard are on the tape, and we'll obviously hear from Powell tomorrow. But the, the general framework is that the overarching question is how long we are going to see this overshoot on inflation and how long the Fed's going to let that last. Absolutely. Where do you come down on that? <laughs> so, you know, my view is that, that the Fed is, is, is getting mugged by reality, that uh, I've been saying for quite a while that, uh, that, that uh, inflation was potentially much more severe a problem than the Fed has been uh, admitting to. Uh, the problem here is I think they're, they're right that, that a lot of the, uh, the recent movement in inflation is from supply, uh, supply shock, from the fact that, uh, that uh, people can't get, get uh, certain goods and services, and that's led to a big increase in prices. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, what really leads to permanent inflation is when you have a, a, a lot of aggregate demand, that there's, there's a lot of spending going on. And in fact, uh, the Biden bill, the 1.9 trillion bill, was was uh, I think not a good bill. It was uh, too large, uh, wrong timing, uh, and uh, and that combined with the fact that that you had a huge amount of pent up spending uh, is uh, uh, means that people were going to start spending a lot more. So I just experienced this. I wanted to book a couple of days for a getaway, uh, and uh, the prices were were twice as much as last year. Why? Because everybody like me wants to finally take a trip. And so what's happened is that that actually uh, higher demand and uh, can actually then lead to more permanent inflation. And that's the problem I think the Fed is facing, again, with potential uh, increased spending from the uh, Biden administration's uh, push on infrastructure. Uh, and the Fed, I think, has been underestimating the potential for inflation. Now, I do think it was appropriate for them to say that they wanted to have inflation be a little bit higher than 2 percent for a period of time. Uh, however, uh, I think that that, uh, that things are actually turning out to be far stronger than they expected on the spending front. Right. And that's going to create some real problems for them. They, they really could be getting behind the curve. Uh, they have to express what they'll do. Uh, and uh, they may not be able to wait as long as they think they're going to wait in order to raise rate interest rates. Right. So in light of that, people looked at spreads last week. They looked at what overall yields did last week. And they are, some argued that it was a sign that the Fed's credibility long term is intact. Do you not think that's the case? Or are markets too technical to make that read right now? Hard to, it's hard to know. Uh, I hope that's the case. Uh, I think that this is a key in terms of Fed's communication, that they that the sooner they can actually express the fact that they will do what it takes to keep inflation from spinning out of control. Uh, that, uh, yes, they can, that it's actually a good thing to have inflation a little bit higher because they've been undershooting uh, the 2% target for a while. But uh, but not to, to basically say to don't worry everything's going to be fine automatically. The real issue is if things start to turn out to, to be more permanent than they than they actually have been talking about, they're going to have to move and they're going to have to move quickly and they have to tell the markets now that that's what they're going to do. That actually means that they'll be less likely to get behind the curve and have to raise interest rates by less. And that's actually something that would be positive for the markets. Fred, I'm going to ask you the same question that uh, Barron's posed to its readers this weekend, which is, can the Fed ever really raise interest rates with a massive level of private sector and public sector debt that's out there right now? Are they kind of in, a, in between a rock and a hard place? Well, the issue here is that the longer they wait, if they, if, if they really need to, to raise rates because inflation is more permanent than they expected, if they wait too long, then they have to raise rates by even more to get credibility. And that's the real danger. So the answer is yes, there is certainly plenty of room for the Fed to raise rates, uh, that uh, this is what uh, 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 they need to do if, if inflation actually starts to be uh, permanently higher at a level that they're not happy about. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, uh, they really have to make sure that they communicate that they're going to do their job properly. That's what actually keeps rates from rising by too much. It's when you actually get behind the curve that you start getting in trouble. Uh, and uh, there's more potential for that now. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.